Hey, what's going on? Today, uh, we're going to be going over the pack setup, the required gear list for ST1. ST1's coming up March 4th and 5th. Uh, you can go to cycle, S-Y-C-O-Y-L.com to go ahead and sign up for training here in Hickman County, Middle Tennessee. Uh, but I just wanted to do it here at the Bushcraft Survivor and Camping Store. Um, one, because they have some great packs. If you don't already have one, uh, this is one here uh, and some other gear that we're going to go through uh, that if you don't have the proper setup yet, uh, they have gear here in the store available uh, for you to purchase and kit out. And you're going to see that everything that you absolutely need for ST1 fits very comfortably. You still have quite a bit of room left in this bag here uh, and it might be a lot less than you expect. So let's go ahead and get into it. We'll just start from the outside. now. As you can see here, this is probably a 20-25 liter pack, nothing more than that. Um, down at the bottom, we have a, a spot that we can strap down our sleeping pad. Now, this is one that we highly suggest. Uh, it is a closed cell foam isomat. It's just a regular military isomat. Uh, you can roll it up and go ahead and put it underneath your pack. It's good to go. Okay, so that is on the required gear list, and I would highly 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 recommend uh, just bringing what is on the required gear list and as soon as you sign up you'll get a revalidation uh, email stating exactly what needs to bring you bring and anything else don't bring it okay all right so as i'm looking back here i'm going to go ahead and take off i have some work gloves okay just regular mechanics work gloves um, you can have leather ones just you need some kind of gloves. That's that's a necessity. Um, and while it's here, a ferro, ferrocerium rod or a ferro rod, uh, at least five inches. Um, if you want to get the longer ones, I think the Uberleaf and hexagon rods are are somewhere around six inches. Uh, but you need a ferrocerium rod or a ferro rod if you don't already have one. Okay, we'll go ahead and put that. To, uh, I'll just go ahead and put that to the side. Uh, something else that is attached here. Uh, are some kind of ranger beads or pace beads and that's going to be utilized when we're doing land navigation um, just that way you know how many steps you've taken know what the distance is so it's going to be something that's crucial uh, to add to your land navigation kit so make sure you have a set of ranger beads uh, easy enough to make you go to Hobby Lobby get some beads and some paracord you can definitely make them uh, but if you don't want to go that route, again, that's why we're here at the store. They have Ranger beads here ready and available uh, for you to purchase just in time for March 4th and 5th for that ST1 course to start. So let's go along with the front pouch and see what we got in here. All right, so along with the Ranger beads, obviously some sort of compass. It doesn't have to be this one. This is a Sunto MC2 uh, compass, and they're great uh, if you have a lensatic compass. You can work with that, or if you have a Coughlin uh, base plate type compass, then that's great too. Now, if you're looking for some and you wanna, you're not really sure if this is something that you really want to get into, um, but you want a good compass, now come in. Here they have uh, the Coughlin base plate, two two different models. I think they run ten or twelve bucks. Um, if you're looking for a Sunto MC2, they won't run anywhere between seventy and ninety dollars on Amazon. Um, and a few other places as well. And I think he even has one, yeah, he does have one available in the store as well. So if you're looking for a really good compass, buy once, cry once kind of thing, uh, and it's still not as much as the Military GI Lensatic Compass. So compass there. Uh, now you're gonna need about 50 foot of 550 cord. Um, so this is, this is gonna be what it looks like. I think this is about 60 foot, but 50 foot at least minimum of 550 cord. Now, please don't be the one that brings an entire 2,000 foot spool of 550. You, you won't need that. Just 50, 50 foot is the minimum. I wouldn't go more than 100 feet though. Okay, you won't you won't end up using it. Um, something to cook your food on. Okay, if you're bringing out dehydrated meals uh, like the backpacker's pantry meal or the mountain house meals, uh, you're going to need something to be able to cook with. Now, I keep it super simple. Uh, there will not be a lot of fires going on to be able to cook with. We will do, be doing demonstrations and teaching firecraft technique. 
uh, but we won't be able to utilize that for means of cooking. So if you want to pack uh, like a jet boil or some kind of isopro tank with a uh, like a Coleman top burner, totally up to you. That's just more weight that you have to carry. Uh, this is my cook kit. It folds apart. It's got some fuel tabs in it. Take all those out. You can light one. It stays lit for 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, I think it even has some in here that'll stay good for any, anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes. They're a little bit larger, uh, but it's just an easy way. And you don't necessarily have to have the stove thing. If you just bring your tablets, we'll teach you how to use that too. All right, so now that we got the little stove out of the way, like I said, it could be a jet boil or, or something along those lines. But if you're going to bring dehydrated food, something like, uh, let's go ahead and pull this out first, uh, something like Backpacker's Pantry, okay? Dehydrated meal. Um, if you're going to bring stuff like this or uh, Mount House, all of these can be sold here at uh, Bushcrafter, uh, the, the Bushcraft Survivor and Camping Store. Uh, they got a bunch to choose from, so if you're in the area and need something like this, there you go. Um, and there's other things too that you don't necessarily have to cook. Uh, they got some jerky down here as well. And again, it, it's not a specif uh, specificity on how much you bring, but since we're only going to be out there for you know a little over 36 hours, um, it's your discretion. Do you need you know tons and tons of food? Probably not. Um, if you want to bring one or two of those backpackers pantries and a thing of jerky, or uh, I even do things like granola bars, uh, they're great. And uh, and or some peanut butter or you know this star kissed kind of uh, tuna or chicken type things as well. Uh, another thing, it's not on the list on the website, uh, but depending on what the weather is like. Uh, in March, it'd probably be a good idea to bring you a small bottle of um, bug spray. Okay, so got that there. All right, so let's get into some of the more noticeable items. Obviously, you're going to need some sort of fixed blade knife. Now, this happens to be a Mori Garberg, and uh, this one is a uh, full tang fixed blade knife. It's got a 90 degree spine on it, sharp. You know, anytime you buy something like this, uh, if you only have room to buy one, I would buy a carbon steel fixed blade full tang knife. And they sell Mora here right in the store. Um, you'll be able to come down, pick one up, uh, something like that. Be useful. And we did say either some type of Leatherman or Swiss Army knife. Same thing here. Uh, we're looking at a Ranger 78 from Victoria Knox. Uh, have everything you need on it as far as an extra knife, a uh, foldable saw, a few extra tools for you as well. But you do need to have some sort of Swiss Army type knife or a Leatherman, Gerber, some kind of multi-tool. Okay. Uh, we talk about having at least four tent stakes. Okay, four tent stakes. That could be uh, that could be four aluminum or uh, titanium stakes. It could be four of the ABS tent stakes. Uh, it could be a mixture of both. Uh, they both have multiple uses, and we can go over that. Um, cheap, cheapest version is probably going to be these ABS tent stakes. They're about a dollar, dollar twenty-five, dollar uh, fifty a piece, and you get four of them. Call it good. All right, right at the top. Haven't taken this out of the package yet. You just need some sort of individual first aid kit or an IFAC doesn't necessarily have to be this big, but it can be this one. It also has molly on the back that you can attach it to the outside of any pack that you have, as long as it's molly compatible. Uh, but this is a good thing. It's an individual IFAC, uh, individual first aid kit, uh, just for you. Okay, You need something like that. You need a stainless steel single walled water bottle. Okay, um, Single walled, that way you can put it in the fire, boil water, and purify your water uh, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and specifically for this class we're going to be in the middle of nowhere and you're going to need a way to boil water and if you bring out a plastic Nalgene or something of that sort or an old school plastic you know ABS canteen military canteen you're not going to be able to boil water therefore you won't be able to pass the class okay along the lines with water filtration um, it is on there that we are requiring some sort of way to 
mechanically filter your water. Uh, this happens to be a, a mini Sawyer water filter. Um, you can use a grail. Um, you can use a platypus style. You can use any kind of mechanical means. Um, the smaller the better. Uh, once this isn't in its package, it's easily packable. You can twist it onto any sort of uh, like smart water bottle or, or a lot of the water bottles that you get at the store, but you need something to mechanically filter your water. Um, you can do something like that, or somewhere in here, we have I think, tabs as well. These are uh, potable aqua tabs. You throw two of these into a canteen, you let it sit for half an hour, and you have drinking water. Okay, so along those lines, you can either have this, you can have mechanical means like the Sawyer mini filter or even a grail. Um, it's also available down here at Bushcraft Survivor and Camping Store as well. So what else do we have in here? This is just a little DACA pouch or a waterproof pouch. You don't have to have one. I just like keeping stuff in here because it keeps stuff like an extra pair of socks, which I highly recommend. Um, this is one of those things that necessarily isn't on the list as absolutely pertinent to bring, uh, but I do suggest it. So have an extra pair of socks. Okay. Um, we are going to give you, and I know it says on the website that you need something to write with and something to write on, some, some kind of little notebook. When you show up to the school, you're going to get a little goodie bag. Okay. And two of the things that it's going to have in, in it is going to be a small write and rain notebook and a couple of golf cart style pencils even has a little racer on it. That way we know you have something to take notes with uh, that's not gonna get messed up in the rain or the weather. Okay, if you're gonna bring food that you need to uh, utilize some kind of utensil with, I would go ahead and pack that. This is a light titanium spoon. Uh, Yuko makes utensils that fit together and guess what, they sell them down here too. So pretty much everything that you could want or need for uh, ST1, the basic course, can be bought down here at the Bushcraft Survivor and Camping Store. Okay. Um, that being said, one thing you're going to have to go somewhere else to pick up are going to be lighters. Um, I usually carry two. One of these would be in my pocket. One of these would be in my bag. Um, specifically on mine, I've uh, taken the liberty of putting about an inch to a, two inches worth of some kind of Gorilla Tape or T-Rex Tape around it. Um, used for a lot of different things. Patch up your bag, light a fire if you have to, um, repair your boots, whatever you need to do. But have two lighters on you, uh, at least one in your pocket, one in your bag. Means of starting fire, along with the ferrocerium rod that we already went over uh, at the beginning of this. Okay. Uh, another thing is you're going to want to have some sort of hygiene kit. And really all that means is uh, something to brush your teeth with. You know, if you have any medications that are prescription, that you need, uh, go ahead and make sure to bring those. And a lot of people always forget that if you don't wear prescription glasses during the day, but you need them at night, make sure you have those packed as well. So if you have prescription um, medications or prescription uh, glasses that you need to use, you can bring those. And of course, something to brush your teeth with, keep your hygiene up. Okay, and last thing in here is going to be, you need some sort of headlamp. Okay, doesn't really matter what it is as long as it has a red and a white light. Okay, and to back that up, you need some extra spare batteries um, in case, obviously, you use all the juice in this and you need some backups. Okay, so headlamp, red and white light, need some extra batteries. Okay, making a mess on the counter here, but that's all right. So um, now we need a poncho. Okay, pretty light, used for a lot of different things. Um, you need some sort of poncho. It's going to have a hood, um, or else it wouldn't really be a poncho. It'd just be a tarp, okay? So just going to unfold. You'll have your hoodie here, and you got to be a regular size military style poncho. We'll be utilizing this for a lot of different emergency shelter configurations, um, and it can be used for a lot of different things, okay? Including just to wear to keep the weather off you. Okay. And last but not least. You need something to sleep in. You can utilize a sleeping bag. You know, if you have a sleeping bag that you absolutely love, that's great. This happens to be a sleeping bag that is a wooby. Um, and a wooby is really just a small uh, blanket. This one happens to have a zipper that goes all the way around it. 
makes it into a sleeping bag. And obviously, as you can tell, it packs down into a very, very small uh, footprint that you can shove at the bottom of your bag and call it good. Every piece of kit here we're go is going to be utilized over the two day course uh, from 8 a.m. on Saturday morning till about two or three on Sunday. It isn't overnight. Um, you don't need to bring any more than what we have right here. In fact, when we do a pack dump uh, prior to starting the class, anything that's excess uh, will go back in your vehicle, okay? So if you don't have any of this or you need some extra kit, come down to the Bushcraft Survivor and Camping Store here in Hickman County, specifically in Lyles, and they can hook you up. Uh, and if not, and you already have a bunch of this stuff, then just make sure you consolidate it, put it in a nice little pack that's going to uh, take the wear and tear of the weekend, because you will be wearing this most of the weekend, uh, doing land navigation and things of that sort. So uh, if you have any questions, put a link below uh, or the comment section below and let us know what you think. But for now, that's it. Talk to you later.